Hey, Nyakun here. Welcome to Obi Studios. Um, recently, there have been a lot of talk about fluid design and responsive design and why am I using pixels and all those other questions and other stuff like that. And even on other Facebook groups and pages that is mostly connected with WordPress, there is a lot of talk about creating designs that are fluid, responsive, yeah, all those other things in between. Um, adaptive design. Um, yeah. So, um, I was like, why don't I try and then make a video trying to show you some of the ways or how you are able to achieve quote unquote fluid design when it comes to WordPress. And most specifically, if you are using um, a builder like Breakdance. So I'm going to show you um, a design that I've done uh, and then I'm going to show you what, um, how I implemented some of the things that I implemented to achieve um, the design that I got at the end of the, um, at the end when I had finished um, designing and building what I wanted. All right, so let me show you that the Figma file that I did. The, all right, so this is the Figma file that I created. This is more like a brochure, um, kind of um, architecture buildings. Yeah, when it comes to design, I love those kind of stuff. Yeah, with the brochure and other stuff like that. So um, I just put together something pretty fast and simple over here that has like a lot of um, layout and a lot of different, different uh, positioning when it comes to layout. It's not too complicated. But it should, um, it gave me the opportunity to lay out things differently and also make them responsive at the same time. So this is the Figma file. Um, I don't know if I want to make this public. If you want to, if you want the, fig, uh, the Figma file, you can let me know in the comment below. I can make it, um, I can give you a link to go download it. All right. So, um, that's the Figma file. Let's go to WordPress and breakdance and see what we have done. All right, so there, there are little changes. I removed the, the paragraph that I had at the top. If you go to the Figma file, you see that there's a paragraph here. I removed that. Um, yeah, but apart from that, everything else should be as it is. Okay, so let's see how this website looks like when it comes to um, all of this um, fluid design and other stuff like that. Let's go to the uh, developers panel. Right, so this is the developers panel, right? Uh, I want you to really focus on what is going to happen when I start shrinking this design down. All right, so I'm gonna hold here and then start pushing it. As I, um, as I keep pushing the design, you can see that things are not just um, jerkly or things are not just trying to come together. Things are scaling down perfectly. Um, it's not like we have like breakpoints and then the breakpoints is causing things to like move quickly together and it's stacking on each other. Now it's not doing that. You can see that it is scaling up and down. Mostly this is what people call fluid design. All right, so I want to show you something else. Um, uh, the first one that I show you is more like a fluid design kind of stuff. I want to show you more like um, adaptive, responsive kind of design that most of the time I do use uh, when I start using something like pixels and other stuff. So you see this, uh, these things over these pictures over here, I'm going to start shrinking down. So you can see that this one is directly trying to close itself and then it turns into this one picture and things start closing down and you don't really feel that it is fluid. It feels more like it is being forced to squished in. So this part of this website is not fluid at all. Let me go back to this. So when I go back to what I created using the fluid method, you can see from here to here, it goes down smooth. It goes down smooth. And at a certain point in time, you might want to close the fluidity and then start coming back to adaptive. And then from, the, from that point, you also want to go back into the fluid form. How, uh, how am I doing this? You can see that, let me go back to the big one. When I start scrolling, um, pressing it down, you can see everything is scaling down, scaling down. At a certain point in time, 
you're gonna struggle right so did you see that little struggle with that yes this and then i'm gonna start pushing it down and it has to now it has to change so now it has moved from being fluid to being adaptive or responsive or stacking on top of each other the reason why you do that is because if you use fluid design throughout your entire build it's not going to work because it's just going to keep scaling stuff down like these these stuff are just going to keep scaling down and you wouldn't be able to see anything when it comes to like smaller screens so when it comes to you having like um whether you should use pixels or you should use rams or you should use amps or you should use clamps or you should use this or that you should understand what you're doing because fluid design is not something that you can do just throughout your design. It's not really going to work. You have to pair it with something else for you to achieve the design that you really want. If you use clamp with clamp, you'll be able to input in three values. And for the three values, you are able to stop gap um, some of the values at a certain point in time. But I didn't use clamps for this. I only use RAMs, um, percentage, pixels, uh, and EMs. So I'm going to show you some, like the very first part of this design. Let me just collapse this and then, okay, so this is section one, right? So the first section is more like the hero section. Let's see the, um, the values that I'm using. Let me save this again. I'm going to go here and go to global settings, right? For anybody who is using breakdowns and you want to achieve some kind of fluid design, Breakdance has a way of trying to solve this problem by using base and ratio. You can try that if you want to use it. I haven't um, done any extensive trial on trying to use this, so I can't really do anything too crazy with it. So with the ratio and other stuff like that, you can input in the ratio and the ratio is going to calculate like um, the big size and the small size and other stuff like that which is also nice i haven't done as i said i haven't done any extensive um i haven't gone through it extensively to be able to use it to create something like this but um if let's say you are not using breakdowns and using something else where should you start from if you want to create flow design you need like a base size a base font size um probably that you need if let's say for me i was using um my my design was 1920. That's why you can see that the design is like fully um, covering the entire screen of this. My design is 1920. That's why I'm able to use this base size of 0.8 VW. So that is the base size. How I got this number, um, I think I'm going to leave um, a link down below to the video from T Trix, um, the guy who um, who builds a lot of Webflow website. He has a website that you can use to calculate your base size. So that is the, uh, it's called wizardry. If you use that, you can start with the base size. So this is my base size that I'm using. So you put in your base size as I have done over here, make sure that you save it. And from there, you just have to, let's say I go into, I open my Figma file, right? So there's a Figma file. And here, this picture is 606 um, pixel on the width, right? What did I do? So Let's say I input in this, this picture. Let's go to the structure panel. So the picture, I wrap it in a div. And then I gave the div the width of 37.38 amps. Why am I using amps? So the difference between amps and rams is that rams is not scalable. You have to understand, rams is not scalable. I only use rams on the body type. So let's say this very font over here, when I go um, into the typography, okay, the typography should be in the property settings. Let me go to presets. So in the preset, there's very one, right? Consider I'm using 1.125 rams. They are the same numbers. If I change this one to M, you don't have to change the number because they are the same thing. But even between the, the RAM and the M is that, the RAM is not scalable at all. It's going to be the same size across every screen size. If I go back over here, look at this very um, typography over here, right? 
I'm going to start scaling it down. You can see that it's not changing size. Why? Because I am using RAM. But this very one is in EMS. So when I start scaling it down, it will start scaling down. Why am I using EMS on this? Because I don't want this to become tiny. But see, this one keeps getting tiny as we keep uh, as we keep scrolling or pushing the um, the width of the device down. But if we do not want it to scale down, then we use RAMs. If you want it to scale down and you use EMS. But when you start getting into like mobile responsive, you have the you want this one going back to our design. We want this um, this dev. Let's go back to because I've wrapped the dev. So I have three devs over here. One, two, and three. All right. And then this big dev. All right. So this big dev is on the left hand side, and then this one is on the right hand side. So this dev is also in EMS. Why? Because I want the dev to start squishing down when the device size becoming small. But when the device size become even small, let's say on mobile. I break down the whole responsiveness. Now I'm making the dev size into 100%. Why? Because using M's, you don't really know the kind of device that people have. So you can't just put in, let's say, like a small number for you to get to cover the entire width of the device. So for me to get the entire width of the device, because this is a really small device, I change the dev into percentage which works fine. So if I go back to our design and I choose, let's say mobile, you can see that it's fully responsive. It's a hundred percent that covers the entire screen. But when we start making it big, it will change at the appropriate time. So it changes when we get into, um, they call this one mobile, right? And then when it starts scaling down, still mobile, when you open it and then you get into um, a tablet mode, it changes again. So that is one thing when it comes to fluid design. It is not really easy and simple to do. So even though people will say um, it to give you more flexibility or it to give you the ability to design more responsive uh, and more fluid um, layout, it is still a lot of work to achieve it because you have to sit down and you have to calculate how things are going to break. But as long as you keep practicing this, as long as you keep putting in time to understand what this is about, you'll be able to get a hold of it and you'll be able to also do it on most of your project. Hopefully on most of the projects um, and then most of the tutorials that I'll be uh, placing online, I'll do my best to make it as fluid as I can. Because I, um, I know that those are best practices, but it is not a simple or a one in all solution when it comes to fluidity or other stuff like that. Um, yeah, apart from that, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing else to talk about. As I said, if you don't want an item to scale down, you have to use the REM. So everything like this text, the body text that is 18 pixels that I'm using, I made sure that it is, it is in REMs. So that you don't have to scale down when I'm scaling, when the size of the device is becoming small. But things like pictures that can scale down proportionally without them uh, becoming too small, those things then you don't really have to worry about. Like this text is pretty big. So when it starts scaling down, it will scale down proportionally with whatever that you're doing. Even the space, see the pictures are also scaling down proportionally. And then after, um, when we reach a breakpoint that is pretty small and we can use the proportional breakdown of the, the device, that is where I change it from what we have into something else. So um, I hope this was, um, I hope you learned something. Uh, going through the, uh, the process of building this, I learned a lot and I'll be implementing most of the things that I've learned. And hopefully you'll be also be able to catch up with it when it comes to building fluid design and that stuff like that. If you want me to do a video on how I build this, oh, let me show you a bit of some interactions over here. So yeah, pretty cool, right? 
if you want to know how I did that, you can see that the image squish and then the radius comes in. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so I think that is that for, for this little, call it a rant or a little talk when it comes to fluidity and other stuff like that. Um, yeah, I should you all. There's nothing. Thank you for watching.